Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Michael Delavita, Director of Technology at the Digital Public Library of America, or DPLA. Today, we'll be discussing a project that has brought some of the vast collections that DPLA and our partners share with the world to a new audience in the Wikipedia ecosystem. By making these items available to users and editors in the Wikipedia universe, we have been able to have significant impacts in terms of item views. We believe that the field should be considering cooperative projects with the Wikimedia community as a way of growing the audience for these materials. Thanks to generous funding from the Sloan Foundation, the DPLA network is now the largest contributor of media to Wikimedia Commons, the digital asset management system that undergirds Wikipedia and other Wikimedia properties. As items have been edited into Wikipedia articles that relate to their content, we've been able to gain greater than 60 million page views since this project began over a year ago, a number that outstrips ordinary page views on DPLA and our partner sites. We are confident that continued investment in uploads and outreach will increase our viewership by orders of magnitude. I'm joined today by partners of ours who have worked with us side by side as we engage in this project. Hailing from Brazil, Giovanna Fontanelle is a program officer at the Wikimedia Foundation and has been an important guide and mentor for DPLA. And Lee Jeremias of the Colorado Virtual Library is the former chair of the DPLA Member Network Council and the administrator of the Plains to Peaks Collective Hub that participates in this program. Each of them are here to share their perspectives on this important work. Speaking here first is Giovanna, who will talk about the programs at Wikimedia Foundation that work with organizations like DPLA. Hello, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here presenting together with Michael and Lee in the leveraging the power of Wikimedia to increase discovery and the use of archival collections. My name is Giovanna Fontanelle. I am the program officer for the Glam and Culture team. I will explain soon what I mean by Glam. And I work at the Wikimedia Foundation. And within this presentation, my talk will be especially about the power of Wikimedia part. For that, I will present a brief introduction to Wikimedia, Wikipedia, and some of our projects, and I hope that you will too understand how powerful the Wikimedia ecosystem can be for cultural, heritage, and archival institutions. First, I would like to open up with this quote. Imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. This quote is from Jim Wales, the founder of Wikipedia. And I always like to use it in presentations like this one because I believe it describes and sums up very well the spirit of this presentation and of the Wikimedia community and the Wikimedia projects. And here we have Wikipedia, the free uh, encyclopedia that everyone knows and uses. And it has more than 300 languages and more than 45 million articles and uh, more than th uh, 3 billion edits made by its millions of contributors, volunteers, contributors across the world. But it is not just about Wikipedia. Wikipedia is part of Wikimedia. It is one, the most famous one in many projects. The Wikimedia Foundation, is the official nonprofit that helps to take care and maintain all of those projects. Here we have Wikipedia and the icon above. Uh, on its side, we have uh, the Wikimedia Commons uh, logo icon, um, uh, which is the multi multi multimedia platform that houses all the media content that appears on Wikipedia. And on the bottom, with that similar to uh, barcode, we have Wikidata, which is the databases of the Wikimedia projects. Uh, but not only on the volunteers, the power of Wikipedia and the other Wikimedia projects lays. It lays on the reach that they have. Wikipedia is one of the most accessed access sites in the world, with more than a billion unique devices every month accessing it. Just on the last month, we had more than 22 billion page views, being 3 billion only in the United States. But I would like you to pay attention to the end of the page here, where you can see the total of media requests. That is an important information for me, my presentation, and the team that I work with, as it shows the interactions with media files, that is images, videos, and documents, and so on. Uh, and just on the last month, we had uh, 73 billion media requests. And considering the last year, we had 
two trillion media requests on the Wikimedia projects. And as I was saying at the beginning of the presentation, I am part of the GLAM and Culture team. And this uh, GLAM acronym stands for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, but also many other knowledge and memory holding institutions. Within the Wikimedia projects, there have been hundreds of those partnerships around the world, united by the common goal of preserving cultural heritage and sharing knowledge with the world. We usually call them GLAMIC initiatives or GLAMIC projects. Institutions such as Europeana, UNESCO, the British Museum, the US National Archives, and the Digital Public Library of America, among many others. These institutions' partners have opened up their archives, libraries, and collections, and worked with us to bring them into Wikipedia and to new audience around the globe. People who have never set foot inside the, those institutions' doors. And as I was saying, images are very important for my team uh, and for GLAMS and images from those cultural partners don't just illustrate uh, articles about their own topics or about cultural culture. Uh, they are used to illustrate a wide range of topics in Wikipedia, such as biographies, historic events, films, cities, and so on, like the Wikipedia page about love or the Wikipedia page about play, for example. A sample of the top 25 articles on Wikipedia in one week in May 2020 found that eight out of 20, the 25 articles were illustrated by image that came from GLAMS. And images usually appear like this in various different versions on the Wikimedia Commons, the, the multilingual platform, the multimedia platform, sorry. And here we can see uh, in 2018, the Metropolitan Museum made a comparison of their collections website versus Wikipedia. So in red here, we can see uh, the, number of, the number of visualizations of those artworks here uh, in the uh, museum's website. In light blue, we can see the number of visualizations only on English Wikipedia. And in dark blue, we can see the number of visualizations uh, with in every or all the, the languages on Wikipedia. And in 2020, uh, 2010, sorry, the British Museum, the largest uh, encyclopedic museum in the world, looked at the traffic to its own sites versus the traffic to articles on Wikipedia. They found that there were as five times as much traffic to Wikipedia as their own site, and that thousands of images from their collections were missing from Wikipedia. They realized that. Uh, and saw how powerful that could be and reached out. Or the Library of Congress that now had, had uh, 38 billion page views just over the past decade on Wikipedia. Or in Brazil, the Museum of Veterinary Anatomy of the University of Sao Paulo that uh, with only its um, 500, sorry, 600 files generated nearly 7,000 page views last month. Or the example of the Smithsonian, which shared image of women as part of their American Women's Initiative. And during the project, they made some important discoveries, like some of the most viewed images were from women of color. Among bigger institutions like the Smithsonian, we have uh, UNESCO, which share its UNESCO World Heritage Sites photographs and have been connected to some funded projects, even with a Wikimedia in residence working for them. And one of the most inspiring on projects in the last few years was the digitization of more than 3,000 palm leaf manuscripts to preserve Bali's culture and literary haters, but also to revive the Bali scripts online, leading to a new language on weak source. But lastly, uh, I would like to talk not only about media files, but about metadata. For data, we have Wikidata, which is the open um, multilingual structured um, platform um, that connects everything on the Wikimedia projects. And as a newer feature, we have the shared data on commons, which is uh, which connects the, the data on Wikidata to the media files on the Wikimedia commons that I said that it was a multimedia platform that houses all the files that are used on Wikipedia. Um, and Wikidata, the, Wikidata, therefore, is very important to link between topics to, to connect to Wikipedia, but it is also connects 
to several other databases and sites, contributing to the linked op open data or cultural metadata convergence. An example at the National Library of Wales here, a visual demonstration of some of the data reported and converted to Wikidata, and a bubble chart on how the National Library of Wales used uh, with data to create visualizations and to translate descriptions of rare print collections from English to Welsh. Or the example by the Metropolitan Museum of Art Glowing Initiative that exemplifies the discovery and the connection potential of Wikidata. The initiative discovered a new information, how in the 1946 movie Gilda, the dress wore by Hita Hayward, which was the most famous dress ever made at the time, was actually inspired by the painting Portrait of Madame X, which is in the museum collection. Or even to show the place of birth locations for most prominent artists from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And here we have an open knowledge production delivery workflow published by Elena Villa Espesa and Tris Navajete that exemplifies how the Harris Institution's content travels uh, the Wikimedia projects and the internet until arriving at the final users and readers. And finally, um, I would like to say that GLAMS use Wikimedia as an essential infrastructure for language diversity, knowledge preservation, unified collections, and digital outreach. And with that, I hope that you could see uh, together with me the power of Wikimedia. Thank you. This is my email. I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you to Giovanna for filling us in about GLAM programs at the Wikimedia Foundation. Next up, Lee will tell us what participation in the Wikimedia Commons uploads program looks like from the perspective of an organization that contributes item metadata to DPLA. Hi, my name is Lee Jeremias and I work for the Colorado State Library. I manage the Plains to Peaks Collective, the Colorado Wyoming service hub of the Digital Public Library of America. Today, I'm going to share information about our hub's experience and workflow with the DPLA Wikimedia project. We jumped at the opportunity to share items with Wikimedia because of Wikipedia's wide reach and its large and active user base. We see this as an opportunity to be proactive and bring items to where users already are and to not just rely on users coming to us directly. I'm going to start by discussing the challenges we knew we would face. The good news is all of our partners are using writestatements.org statements, and a few are using Creative Commons licenses, which puts our partners in a good position to share items with Wikimedia. Some of, of our partners have already evaluated rights on an item by item basis, and this has resulted in statements that are compatible with Wikimedia. However, many of our partners are using the statement, copyright not evaluated. In other words, we knew these partners would have to do rights work if they wanted to share, they want to share items with Wikimedia, and this could be challenging. Also, like many hubs, our partners use a variety of different systems, such as ContentDM, Luna, DSpace, and PassPerfect. Before diving in, we had to figure out the different ways in which these systems share either the IIIF manifest or how they share the full, full media file. We discovered that not all systems are able or fully able to share these files. For example, PassPerfect can share the fullest version of an image provided by the partner, but at the moment cannot share all images included for an object, such as all the pages of a document. Like many institutions, our partners are facing challenging times and are stretched even more thin than they were in the past. Because of that, we wanted to ensure that this project did not feel like a burden and yet another thing put on our plate. Our approach has been to let partners choose whether or not they would like to share items with Wikimedia. As a hub, we still have some contributing partners that are hesitant to share full media files. Only partners that want to share items with Wikimedia are sharing a IIIF manifest or the full media file with us. We also let DPLA know prior to each ingest if a new partner would like to share items with Wikimedia. They will only pull appropriate items 
for those particular partners. This allows our partners to feel confident about what they are sharing with us. Also wanted to start slow by proving concept and working with partners that we consider low hanging fruit. Partners that we knew would be able to share the items with compatible rights information and provide the triple IF manifest. As a hub with a small amount of staff, we knew we could not take on all the long term work of adding images to articles and creating new articles. However, initially we were prepared to take on the work of adding items to articles in order to prove the benefit of participation. We want to show and stress that this project only builds upon the hard work our partners have already done. Partners that participate in the DPLA have already digitized their collection and created and shared the metadata. This work has made it relatively easy for them to then share items with another platform. I want to stress how easy it is to add items to Wikipedia articles and talk a little bit about my workflow. My workflow may be diff a little different than a partner that actually holds the material and contributes content. While we manage the hub, we are not a contributing institution, so I'm not as close to the content as a contributing partner is likely to be. So my workflow was to, brow was to browse the PPC material being contributed to Wikimedia and find items that I thought might have a re related Wikipedia article. For example, this image of a badger contributed by the National Wildlife Research Center. I added this to an article about badgers. I found the task of adding the image to be simple and very similar to adding media to a WordPress site or blog post. This only took me a few minutes. This one item has received over 150,000 views during the last three months. In this example, I spent about an hour total adding 12 items from the Denver Public Library. Many of the items I added were maps or bird's eye views of towns in Colorado. So these are relatively easy additions that took very little thought. A contributing institution might have more knowledge of a particular item or subject matter. So what they choose to add or write about might have more depth in my additions. As you can see, the more well-known the town, the more views the items and page received. Collectively, these items held just over 50,000 page views in July. We want to continue to educate partners about right statements and use the Wikimedia project as an added benefit of doing the important work of evaluating rights. We also know that adding images to existing Wikipedia articles is only part of the project. We need to be creating articles too. However, this does bring up one of the challenges we face, our partners' time and effort. Again, with this, we would like to build upon the work we and our partners are already doing by repurposing blog posts that have already been written or maybe text from exhibits that has already been created. We are currently working to develop and then prototype a graduate student project that will add items to existing Wikipedia articles as well as create new articles. We hope this project will be replicated to help other hub partners in their Wikimedia work. In the future, we hope to engage not only MLIS students, but students in other related departments, such as the history or education departments. In the end, our experience has been that this is another avenue of access to our partners' collection. It enhances the historical record, and so far it has taken little work on our end and our partner's end. Of course, the more you put into it, the more you are likely to get out of it. With that in mind, we aim to create an environment of support for our partners so they don't feel as if they are going it alone. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Finally, I'd like to quickly discuss what this project looks like from the DPLA perspective. DPLA thus far has gathered 10 partner institutions to work with us on this program. Participation is voluntary, although we already need to be working with a hub that contributes data to DPLA to include their items and uploads. We view this as a service we can provide to our membership. You can see here, we've uploaded 2.3 million files to Wikimedia Commons thus far, and we continue to grow this collection every month. Each of these files are available in search to any Wikipedia editor who is looking for media to place in a Wikipedia article. You can see here a screenshot of an analytics tool available to GLAM institutions contributing to Wikimedia Commons that shows web views month over month and breaks down the last month's page views by each language edition of Wikipedia. 
Interestingly, there are page views coming from dozens of language editions and other Wikimedia properties like Wiktionary, Wikiquote, and Wikidata. Here's a screenshot of the analytics dashboard we make available to DPLA member and network institutions, which among other things, provides statistics about the collections that members contributed to DPLA in terms of their readiness to be included in uploads. Thank you again for joining us and learning more about our project. DPLA is proud to be involved in this work to bring these resources to a new audience and help our partners have a greater impact on the web. If you have any questions, would like more information, please feel free to reach out to me directly at michael at dp.la and I'll be glad to help you. Take care, everybody.